The $70 price tag is a shock next to the $60 DualShock 4 and Microsoft Xbox One game pads, but I was banking on a better experience with the Pro Controller than the Joy-Con Grip. I'm still not thrilled about the price tag, but I'm extremely satisfied with the Pro Controller. Ergonomically, the highest compliment I can pay Nintendo's new gamepad is that it feels almost identical in your hands to the Hall of Fame-worthy Xbox 360 controller. The two are almost the exact same size and shape, and the Pro Controller's build quality is even higher. Its face buttons are big, much bigger than the tiny Joy-Con buttons, and they give a nice press. Thumbsticks also feel excellent, and Miyamoto be praised they're offset, just like on the Xbox. The handles feel great too, they're just the right size for comfortable extended gameplay sessions. You also get a real D-pad, which is an undeniable advantage over the tiny, separate directional buttons found on the left Joy-Con. I had no issues using motion controls to solve Breath of the Wild's controversial Maya Magana Shrine. Battery life from the built-in rechargeable power source is phenomenal, with a claimed 40 hours that I've yet to successfully run down. That crushes the 7-8 hour life of the DualShock 4 and is similar to the AA-powered Xbox One gamepad. My only real complaints about the Pro Controller are more nitpicks than serious criticisms. First, the digital Z-triggers don't depress as far as I'd like in order to sufficiently differentiate them from the L and R shoulder buttons. Second, the rumble feedback effect is a bit mild compared to the more intense response you get on the Joy-Con. And finally, that price. At $70, it's more expensive than rival console gamepads. But that extra $10 is buying you that impressive rechargeable battery and an NFC reader that can be used to scan in Amiibo at least. Even if the Pro Controller's price gives you pause, I can't deny that you absolutely get a high quality gamepad that rivals the default input devices on the other two consoles. If it's anything like the Xbox 360 controller it so closely resembles, it's likely to serve you very well for the duration of the Switch's life cycle. I plan on using it regularly both at home and on the road. For more on everything Nintendo Switch, keep it tuned to IGN.